Welcome, 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 ladies and gentlemen of the internet. This is Shank here to bring you a rant. This one is uh, slightly overdue, I guess. Yeah, I guess it's slightly overdue. Uh, but wanted to talk to you guys today about the Xbox One and how, you know, certainly the PS4, but the Xbox One in particular is completely completely just failing this promise of quote-unquote next gen to consumers and we're going to be talking about quantum break in here today given digital foundry's recent analysis there are a lot of numbers in this and there are going to be a lot of facts thrown your way so if you are one who is averse to facts and you know experiences and just Things that are generally accepted as true and can be backed up, then maybe this video is not for you. Though I encourage you to watch this video anyway so that you can, I don't know, learn something and hopefully make a better purchasing decision. Now, this is just, this kind of stuff just makes me super, super pissed off. But we are genuinely living in a time in 2016, where there are still 720p games that are being pumped out on these so-called next-gen consoles. And that, I'm sorry, I mean, that is that is unacceptable. That is just unacceptable. 720p game, I mean, we've had 720p gaming since, you know, the, the 360. Like, it's a 10-year-old uh, resolution that's been made standard by 10 year old consoles how is it at all okay that this is still happening now there's an article on Forbes uh, written by Jason Evangelo that kind of speaks to this and he kind of breaks down a couple of things and he discusses you know that the next gen is is failing us and he makes a couple of good points in here that are worth mentioning and they're worth talking about and I want to get this, you know, right off the top uh, of this video here. It doesn't matter if you like a game, okay? It doesn't matter if you like the studio. It doesn't matter if you like the publisher. It doesn't even matter if you like that console or platform. You cannot argue with numbers. You just can't. And yes, performance does affect your gameplay. Graphics do affect your gameplay. Frame rate absolutely affects your gameplay. It just does. And I will show you in this uh, one example of Quantum Break, but there are many, but specifically here we're talking about Quantum Break. I will show you how this affects gameplay. And of course, we're going to be talking about Xbox Live and how awful that is as well as tie this into the PC and how Xbox Live actually adversely affects PC, which is just, it, if that makes no sense to you, I mean, it shouldn't because it's absolutely ludicrous. Okay, so first, there were many, many promises made about the Xbox One, okay? This was a time when it was announced, you know, in 2013, there was so much hype around the PS4 and the Xbox One. Oh my God, it's next gen, it's next gen. And these consoles are continually failing to live up to those promises. One such promise, okay, one such promise was this Xbox One would be capable of 4K gaming. This is an article via Polygon. I'm going to link every single one of these articles in the link in the description below. But it was pretty much said in no uncertain terms that there is no hardware restriction at all regards to 4K gaming. And this, this is the exact quote from the article, okay? Medi also revealed the console will support 4K for Blu-ray Blu at launch, with the possibility of games and other content being available at 4K in the future if they are rendered at the resolution. Quote, there's no hardware restriction there at all, end quote. I mean, you cannot argue with that. He's saying there are in no uncertain terms, there's no hardware restriction for the Blu-ray and the uh, games and other content, as Polygon puts it, in 4K. This was something that a head of Xbox said. Okay, this, this is Yusuf Mehdi from Xbox telling Polygon this a couple years ago regarding the Xbox One, just ahead of the launch. In no uncertain terms was it said, Blu-rays, 
games and other content in 4K in the future, okay? <laughs> How? How can Xbox One do 4K? It struggles, as we will show. It struggles in 720p to hold 30 frames per second. How the hell can it possibly even think about doing 4K? This is a company in Microsoft. This is a brand in Xbox that are just hell-bent on just hyping their product and just making promises and just preying on the expectations and excitement of gamers who, frankly, will believe what they say because, of course, you know, that's Microsoft. They're the experts. You know, if they say something, I'm going to believe it. Like, that is what your average gamer will think. And here's Microsoft and Xbox One just lying, just flat-out lying. If you knew hardware at all, you would obviously know the Xbox One is not even capable of doing 4K. It can barely hit 1080p in most of the cross-platform games. How on earth can it do 4K? But that's somebody who's, you know, who knows hardware. If you're an average gamer, oh, there's no hardware restriction there at all. Okay, cool, I'll believe you. I mean, that's, that is just, that is unacceptable. That is an insult, and that's just a flat-out lie. Additionally... Microsoft is a company who's, you know, the CEO, Phil Spencer here, right? And he talks about in one of the episodes of Podcast Unlocked that it effectively, you know, take a GPU, right, to just hit the same resolution as the Xbox One would cost twice as much as the Xbox One. <laughs> Which is insane. I'm going to read the quote. Frankly, from a financial perspective, the most cost-effective way to go play these games is to own an Xbox One. The graphics card alone is probably 2x what the Xbox costs to run at a similar resolution. This is the head of Xbox who is trying to evangelize around PC gamers to gain the trust of PC gamers. Again, that is a flat-out lie. He came on Twitter later and said, you know, yeah, that was incorrect, but he did so in the most invisible manner possible by tweeting one individual instead of going back on Podcast Unlocked, where he could command the same audience and tell that same audience what he said was wrong. Okay, that's, I mean, again, this is a guy and a company who wants to court PC gamers, and he says things like that. Unacceptable, and it is a lie that people will believe because he's Phil Spencer. That is just absolutely ridiculous. Now, there is another example of Microsoft just blatantly, you know, not even respecting PC gamers at all. And that would be the Gears of War Ultimate Edition, which we're going to talk about here in one second, ladies and gentlemen. But when it released, there was huge, huge issues on AMD cards. Uh, you know, a lot of people did benchmarks and they found that the AMD Fury would have awful, you know, artifacts. And they found out obviously it was tied to HBO plus with NVIDIA. But still, the game was allowed to be sold to people for actual money in that state. That means somebody had to sign off on the game and say, yes, it is okay to put this game on the market. Somebody at some point had to give the go-ahead for that. Again, Microsoft trying to court PC gamers, and this is what they do. They're trying to, you know, consolidate this Xbox brand, and this is what they do. It's just disgusting and insulting and downright disrespectful. It's awful. We talked about Quantum Break, didn't we? Let's talk about Quantum Break. And how, again, the Xbox One is just an abject failure of next gen. There was a digital foundry analysis that uh, released today. And uh, basically, it was they were allowed to play the first uh, two chapters, I believe, of the game Quantum Break, the perpetually delayed game Quantum Break. Um, and the code, if you watch the videos, they say they meant digital foundry mentions that the code they were given was, quote, final code. And they did their analysis on this, quote, final code. Now, what did they say about the game? Quote, they noticed that there were, quote, noticeable compromises at work in bringing the game's rich filmic visuals to Xbox One that perhaps distract from the experience. End quote. Now, 
Digital Foundry, this is their job, okay? Digital Foundry's job is to look at the technical basis of the games that are out. It does not matter what platform it's on. They're going to look at it and they're going to critique it as it should, they should, you know, games should be criticized if they're talking about this technical stuff. You know, it doesn't matter what platform it's on. If there's criticisms, they're going to deal it out. You, it's part of the beauty of dealing with technology is that you cannot argue with numbers. Numbers are there. You know, they're in your face. They're measurable. They're objective. You, you simply cannot measure, you know, you cannot argue with them. They mentioned that there's a slew of effects going on, and they talk about how the resolution actually may be 720p. 720p in 2016 on a so-called next-gen console. I'm going to remind folks, Quantum Break was literally the first game announced for the Xbox One. Um, and this was during, you know, their reveal and all this crazy, crazy stuff. But this was like, you know, their their big game that was announced, and it was one of the first games announced with this console and it's been delayed and delayed and delayed so naturally people have an expected hype <laughs> it's in 720p my god there was a siggraph 2015 white paper that remedy the developers released and in here i'm going to link to this as well they talk about various lighting effects that they um have implemented in the game and they say quote our final image is 1080p, but screen space lighting is evaluated at 1280 by 720. And Digital Foundry takes note of this. There are actually many, many effects that are rendered at a very, you know, much lower resolution than the native 1080p. And it is distracting. What is incredible is that they also note the lighting here. And I'm going to read this quote again. It says, quote... Additionally, some volumetric life sh light shafts seem very blocky, rendering it what looks like 1 16th of the final 1080p output. 1 16th of the final 1080p output, guys. That is... I, I literally cannot think of a resolution that low. Like, I cannot... I mean, and this is on a quote-unquote next-gen machine. My God... There's more in this analysis. They say, quote, In every scene tested so far, a native resolution of 720p is the consistent result found in each pixel count test. <laughs> 720p. Now, I know what a lot of you guys are going to be saying. Graphics don't matter. It just matters about the experience. It just matters how it feels. Gameplay is all that matters, guys. You know, because of course gameplay is all that matters. Why would you even talk about graphics? No one cares. Well, once again, from their analysis, quote, tearing and frame rate drops result in judder and reduced controller response here, with this having a knock-on effect to gameplay. Performance suffers just as we take aim at surrounding enemies, and the variable levels of latency and visible stutter make it harder to take accurate shots. Right there... There is your graphics and performance and your frame rate affecting gameplay. That is where graphics matter. That's where frame rate matters. That's where resolution. All these things, that, that's where it matters. All of these things do affect gameplay. So saying it doesn't affect gameplay, you know, that's just wrong. It is just wrong. It is... It, it, this, you know, stuff like this, it angers me on so many levels. Number one, that Microsoft just flat out lied... I mean, they just lied. A 4K, you know, we're going to have 4K games? No. In no uncertain terms, there's no hardware rest uh, restrictions at all. No, that's a lie. That's just a flat-out lie. Microsoft lying about that. Phil Spencer saying it's going to take twice, you know, you need a graphics card twice as much as the console to output the same resolution. A blatant lie right there. Gears of War Ultimate PC, which we'll talk about in a second, broken on the PC. Blatant disrespect to the gamer. And on top of that, what gets me most is these machines, these woefully underpowered, pathetic excuses of machines. This is a clear example, just one example, of these machines inherently limiting the vision and the art of developers. They want, I mean, they created all of this technology, 
Okay, that is not easy work. This is the, I'm not a developer at all, but they spent years creating this technology. All of this uh, assets, you know, all these, it, this art, this, this is art. And what does the Xbox One and the PS4 and consoles, these, this generation of consoles make these people do? They have to compromise on their art. They have to pare back things just so they get a shell of their vision to run on this limited silicon box. Another example of art, of, of technology, or you know, lack of hardware, really, restricting art, Halo 5, right there. Just for 60 frames per second, look how much was pared back in the game. Resolution, huge hit. Animations of distant enemies, once every two frames. I mean, it was just awful. That is the so-called next-gen console making developers compromise on their art. That is what I find so damning. You know, yes, they lied to consumers. That's awful. And on top of that, you're making developers compromise on their art and their vision. If I was a developer, I would be insulted by that. I really would. Let's talk about Gears of War on Xbox One. In February, all right, the Xbox Live service had gone down nine times. I'm going to link this article again. Nine times. Remember, this was a console that they originally wanted always online. <laughs> and the service that they're paying for goes down nine times in a month. That is insane. The gall of Microsoft have, have initially wanted an always online console. That is absolutely insane and an insult to gamers. It really is. It is an insult to gamers who pay for a service with the rightful expectation that that service will stay up and running when they want to play games that they bought and paid for with actual money. With respect to Gears, what happened? Well, uh, Bradford, actually, he has the game on PC because, you know, he's, he's, a, he's a journalist and he needs to play these things and review these things. What did he find? Well... On one day when Xbox Live was down, he figured he'd go on and test Gears of War online uh, because he basically wanted to see if the PC version was affected by Xbox Live because, you know, that would make no sense. Why would a PC be affected by an Xbox, you know, a console service? But here's what he found, this screen. You need to be signed in to a gamer profile to proceed. He thought, you know, of course, okay, maybe I can't play multiplayer. Maybe, you know, surely I could play the single player portion. No, he could not play the single player portion of Gears Ultimate on PC because you need to sign into your profile. And you can't sign into your profile because Xbox Live was down. So here we have an example of a PC game being affected by a console service. A purported next-gen console that's supposed to bring all this functionality and, you know, easiness and just graphical horsepower all these promises to the consumer and all of that is broken all of that is just shattered it's a complete fabrication and lie this is insulting ladies and gentlemen this is insulting the xbox one is a sorry excuse for a console there used to be days in the 360 days you know when the 360 and PS3, they were actually pretty damn powerful for when they came out. And they were more powerful than your PC that you could find for a similar price. Today, not at all. Not at all. You can build a $400 PC. And as I've, I've proven this on our podcast time and time again, you can build a $400 PC, which will kick the crap out of these consoles. And you can constantly upgrade it if you want. You don't have to if you want. And it can do a whole bunch of other media things that your console cannot do. You can play it from your couch. You can use any controller you want. You can, oh, I don't know, set it up like a console with, you know, the Steam uh, big picture mode and just run it like that through your TV. This Xbox One, I have never hated a console more than I have the Xbox One. Keep in mind, I actually have both of the consoles. I cannot remember the last time I actually enjoyed playing <laughs> on my consoles and it's because of shit like this that it's just an abject failure of this promise of next gen if you guys didn't like this video you know what to do but of course you're wrong because there are facts in here to point you otherwise uh, if you like this video do whatever you want um, I'm going to go back to playing Paragon 
in 1440p at 70 frames per second. All right, peace out.